Hi, Steve Jones here with the Hardscape Channel. I've got with me Torsten Schick from the Profs Company in Germany. Torsten. Hello, Steve. Hey, great to have you back here in Louisville this year. It yeah. was nice to have you. Nice to have you come and buy us a wonderful steak dinner last night. Yes. Our Welcome. customers and my employees loved it. Okay. So, tell us about tell us what's happening new at Probst. What, what is new? What we try to do at the moment is to to make devices more efficient. So that means, for example, small things. We have a clamp which is used for normal stones, and yeah. we, we we have produced new adapters that it can be used for different things. You have one device and can be used for different uh, applications. It's also in the vacuum systems. For example, we have a, a vacuum tool which can be attached to an excavator. And now we have developed some tools that you can use the, 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 the vacuum system as a basic unit and can connect with some hand tools. Hand so accessories coming off the power yeah. head, the power yeah, unit. Yeah, that's it. And then you can use it by hand for an excavator and that makes things more flexible and, and more useful and at the end yeah, the, the cost is, is, is lower and the benefit is better. For sure, for yeah. sure. So this morning we were out with uh, Bill Schneider and Aqua Paving at the, uh, at the event, at the permeable installing event. So it's so hard to show mechanical installation, especially permeable, yeah. with our ultra screed machine and with the Pavermax laying machine. In such a, it's 4,000 square feet, but it's like working in a closet. It's it's just so tiny. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think about the? In, you guys at Probes for Instrumental uh, and Bill Schneider in making us aware of the new Terra Test falling weight deflectometer. Yeah. What's your experience, or what do you think of that unit? So it's it's quite new, but I think it's very useful because if you do this test. You can confirm later on that you have done the test and you, you, you can confirm that the, the, the base was right. And you get a, a printed uh, piece of paper that you see exactly what was happened before. Now it was interesting when Glenn was describing it and showing it to the customers that the uh, it's got GPS, so right wherever you take yeah. your density test, it, it, it's got a GPS location. Yeah. That it, uh, what else was it, it was doing some really cool stuff. Um, now I'm trying to remember. I haven't done it enough. I've only watched Glenn a couple yeah, of times yeah. operate the machine. But one of these, uh, oh, I know, there was a question from a customer asked about measuring density. Yeah. And deflection tests are entirely different than density testing. Yeah. Nuclear density testing tests the absolute density against a representative sample. Deflection tests really tell you if you've achieved the level of compaction or stiffness of the pavement that you ultimately can achieve with the materials and in, in on site. So you don't need a reference sample. Yeah. You don't have to test, put it to a testing lab first. Yeah. And it, it, I found it amazing what it was able to do in a small, compact, usable package on a job site. Yeah. And the good thing is also you, you, you can also test the, the soil not only what you have done, you can test the soil before you put on the sub base or the base so that you can be sure that also the soil is strong enough because we recommend that you should have 25 megapascal. If it is below, then you shouldn't start the construction. So adding the subgrade, the soil, the native soils, you're saying that 25 megapascals yeah. is your minimum starting point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it is below, then you shouldn't do it. Then you have some other work to do first. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Or go to the architects and tell yes. them that there's something Fix wrong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, change this. Yeah, yeah change yeah. this. Yeah. And I think uh, too many times uh, that so many, so many of the larger contractors, our customers, they get into a uh, adversarial relationship with the site engineer and site architects and, mm -hmm. and general contractors when they say it's not ready and they go well how do you know because experience tells us that what you have prepared for us is not ready but an opinion even based on great experience yes. and true knowledge is not enough to get someone to fix it yeah that's right yeah. and what they do is they go ahead and tell them install the pavers yeah, yeah. and when the job fails yeah. it's your fault yeah and that's the part that I that this that this type of testing unit, portable testing unit, yeah. allows a contractor yeah. to cover himself. Yeah, yeah this, then, then you have it in, in written. It was the same case for us, for the vacuum technology, when we said to the, the, the plants that the vacuum is 
is porous, the, the, the flap is porous. Nobody believed you. Then we developed a, a testing device, now we can show it. <laughs> Otherwise they don't believe it. I know, that's true, and even our small vacuums that we have on the booth here today, yeah, yeah. is uh, it's always fun to show them. Yeah. You know, and actually, I didn't think about that, but for the uh, the little battery-powered yeah. two-man slab yeah. vacuum, it would be good to bring it, the problem is it's going to fall and break, so we're going to have to bring a few of them, yeah. is yeah. to bring a, 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 porous, a porous slab yeah. to show them that it can't pick it up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is this is really crazy. Nobody believes that concrete is porous. Everybody says it's 10 centimeter, four inch thick. Yeah, cannot be that air goes through. But if it is dry cast made, then it's porous. Yeah. As long as it's wet cast or, or natural stone, no problem at all. You can use a small pump. I had an interesting question today. We're jumping all over the place, but that's okay. Uh, one of our manufacturers of slabs today asked if altitude. Mm -hmm. He's at 6,000 feet in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Has anything to do with the vacuum, that it, uh, how a vacuum operates or its capacity? Does it change at elevation? Um, I didn't get the, the question for us. Okay. The higher up you go, the thinner the air. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, no, so it, he's at 6,000 yeah. feet elevation. Yeah. Yeah. Is that going to affect yeah. the capacity of the suction lifting? It's not the capacity, but it's the under pressure you can reach. As higher you are, yeah. as less under pressure you have. Yeah. And you have only one bar under pressure at the ground, and it goes less and less as higher you get. And if you're at, at a Mount Everest, for example, you have yeah. maybe 0.6 bar under pressure. Even if you have a pump, which can do more, it's not possible. So, so what's your experience at elevation, say, you know, in, in the mountains of Switzerland? Do you have any problems with, uh, with no, vacuum? No, still, still, still it's, working, no, no okay, problem at so all. No so problem. They, they so do not go so high up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someday we'll get papers yeah, on Mount yeah, Everest, yeah, yeah. but I don't want to carry yeah. them up there. Yeah. So what else? Tell us more. I know uh, that last year you had the, the, big, the big party. Yeah. How many years for probes now? 50 years anniversary. 50 years. Yeah. And it was unfortunate I was unable to attend the party, yeah. but uh, Glenn and Bob, but, uh, I understand, represented us quite well in the drinking competition yeah it was it was quite quite nice <laughs> <laughs> and and not so much sleep to be honest <laughs> oh. well again uh, it, it's always been a great pleasure and I'm sorry I couldn't make it hopefully you guys will have to make it up here for for uh, some some vacation time sometime okay Torsten thank you so much we appreciate props thank we you. appreciate all the innovation and, yeah. and creativity and and support that you provide the hardscape industry so we also happy with Havetech as our <laughs> dealer here in, the, in North America, so yeah. thank you for that. That's a pleasure for us, truly. This is Steve Jones with Torsten Sick, signing out from the Hardscape Channel.